to understand the Eucharist, we also have to understand prayer. prayer. And the Eucharist, the Eucharist is the prayer. It is the prayer of Christ on our behalf to the Father, where he offers himself. St. Francis de Sales says that the mystery of the cross is not repeated in the Eucharist, but it is the continuation of that sacrifice. The sacrifice of Jesus happened once and for all on the cross, but it is continued in the sacrifice of the mass. And the key thing about prayer, let us remember, when we're talking about Christian prayer, the key thing about prayer is that the key agent in prayer is not us, it's the Holy Spirit. We're responding under the Holy Spirit, guidance to God. St. Therese of Lisieux says a wonderful thing. She says a wonderful thing. It always stayed with me. It always struck me. She says that when she looked at, her, at how much God loves us and her feeble attempt to respond to that love, she was quite frustrated. She says, like, God, after all you've done for us and the amazing way you continually pour out your love to us and your love never changes, it's steadfast. And no matter what we do, even when we do wrong and we sin, it doesn't change your love for us. You continue to love us as much as ever. How can I possibly respond to such infinite love? How can I respond to it? And she discovered the only way she could respond to God's love in any meaningful way was to borrow his love. And she says, when we pray with the Holy Spirit, we borrow his love in order to love him back. And that's the only way that God can be loved. You know, our human love is so limited in that regard. So we borrow his love when under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we respond to God in prayer. And what we begin to discover, therefore, is that when we talk about prayer, Jesus is always constantly at prayer for us. And prayer, ultimately, Christian prayer, is actually tuning into the prayer of Jesus, who's always praying to us. Prayer is happening in us through the spirit of Jesus that has been poured into our hearts. So our prayer is tuning into what God is actually doing. And a good example of that is John 17, the great priestly prayer of Christ, who prays on our behalf to the Father. Father, that they may be one as you and I are one. And this would be a good exercise, good prayerful exercise for maybe some of our viewers to do, is to go through John 17 and to allow it to become personal. So for example, when you hear Jesus saying, Father, I pray for those you have given me that they may be one as we are one, for example, then simply say, when you're praying with the bride, Jesus, you pray, you're praying that Brian, who has been given to me, may be one with me as the Father and I are one. So to put your name in the place of where he's talking about this. When we do that, it helps us to tune into the prayer that is already happening with Christ. So we need to understand this first before we can understand what is happening in the Eucharist. If you liked what you just saw and would like to see the full interview, click on the Watch More box above or else click on the link in the description box below. Make sure to also click on the subscribe button above so as to receive more regular content. Thank you.